So here's the beginning of transforming trig graphs. Um, so doing transformations with those. Um, I am teaching this, but I made a video because I have a bunch of kids that are going to be absent. So you're welcome. Um, so on this one, what we we have the different things that we could do to transform the graph. So it looks a little funny when we talk about when we use this function notation, but think of it as just being um, y is equal to a times sine of b times x plus c plus d. So um, these, these are the notes that I've already posted for you, and I just want to talk through stuff and help you understand what's going on. Um, so as you already know, many of you are really, really good, most of you are really, really good at doing transformations anyway. And as you know, that A is a vertical stretch. So it would take um, our function, if this is our function, and it would just stretch that. Oh, okay, well, whatever. So that, that becomes a vertical stretch, and if it's a sine graph, that vertical stretch changes this amplitude. Okay, so when we talk about um, and the amplitude of sine and cosine, since those are the only two with amplitude, if it's the absolute value of a, um, we would it might if I make it negative though. So like say I had y is equal to negative sine of x, you'll remember that that reflects it. Okay, so whatever my parent function, if this is one, here's one. But instead of starting and going up first, now I start and go down. Um, the amplitude though even when I'm going down first, is a positive one. The, um, when we talk about, well, when we graph tangent, here's tangent roughly, um, I only require you to tell me the asymptotes and the zero. So this point, um, it's a zero until I, I shift it, but this inflection point where it changes concavity. Um, I could ask you for this point right through here, and, and I know some teachers that do, this becomes the point, well, pi over four and then positive one. Um, that's a little too marked there. Um, but since I don't, stretching this, like if I had um, y equals 2 tangent of x, that doesn't change the 0. Oh, it, but all that it does is it changes. This is now the point pi over 4 comma 2. Um, I don't find, and then it's a little, so it's a little steeper when you multiply it by 2. I don't find that a very exciting change. So with tangent and cotangent, I'm going to either let a equal 1 or negative 1 um, if I have the power to decide what the equation is. Um, because these two, you'll notice, they have the basic shape. They, their asymptotes didn't change. Their zero didn't change. All that changed is how steep they are. And I don't find, I don't ask you for this much precision. So I'm not going to um, do something like that on, on a test or quiz. Um, OK, so, but. Um, with secant and cosecant, if I've got, say, here's cosecant. Oh, sorry, can you see it? Um, here's an asymptote. Cosecant looks something like this and something like this. If I if I need to stretch this vertically, it's what it's going to do is it's going to it's going to we have to mine the gap. Um, if this had been at one and then I make a stretch it to two, and here is one uh, negative one and negative two, it's going to it's going to widen that gap through there. So what I wrote on our, in our notes is that A is a vertical stretch. It affects the amplitude for sine and cosine. So the amplitude is equal to the absolute value of A. And then we have to mind the gap with secant and cosecant. Um, I didn't write down anything for tangent and cotangent because I prefer just to keep A positive or negative one. OK, the next thing, B, you'll remember B does a vertical, I lied, a horizontal, sorry, a horizontal compression. And so what that does is it changes the period. So if I have something like y is equal to sine of 2x, it takes my sine graph, and instead of doing everything I need to do by 2 pi, so normally we go do 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 by 2 pi, now it's going to do that twice as fast, so it's going to get there by pi. So it would do something closer to this. So now this new period, I don't know if that uh, makes a lot of sense, but what it's done is it's compressed the whole um, graph and instead of um, instead of doing everything it's going to do by 2 pi and now does everything it's going to do twice as fast. So the way that I like to write this in our notes is that um, the hor it's a horizontal compression and it's our, our new period after the transformations is equal to the parent function period divided by b. Now often you'll see they'll just say oh it's 2 pi over b. Well that's true for sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant, but it's not true for tangent and cotangent. If you remember, um, tangent and cotangent have, um, tangent and cotangent, they have a period, their parent function has a period of pi. So I just like to 
write this because that's true for all cases. Okay, so um, you are very familiar with shifting left and right, and that would be the, the C value. Um, sometimes this is called a phase shift, so it's just going to take our whole graph and shift it left or right. Um, ha are you having fun with my hands? Okay, so um, then the D value just moves it up and down. Sometimes we call that a vertical displacement. And the thing that I want to make sure you remember is to factor out B. So if I had something like... Um, if I had something like y is equal to sine of 2x plus pi, your shift is not pi. You have to factor that out, 2 times x plus, and then what do I have to multiply? This is pi over 2. I always check to go multiply it back. When I distribute it back, do I get this? So this is not a shift left pi. This is actually a shift of left pi over 2. So be careful, be careful. Don't forget to factor out b. Okay, the next example... It says, describe this graph, um, 4 cosine of 2 times x plus pi over 6 uh, plus 3. 4 impacts the amplitude. 2 impacts the period. Uh, pi over 6 right here tells us that we're going to move left. Pi over 6 and 3 moves us up. So what we wrote here is that the amplitude, oh, sorry, the amplitude is 4. The period is now, um, it's been compressed by a factor of 2, which means it's 2 pi over 2, which is pi. It's, we're shifting left pi over 6 and then up 3. And very soon you're going to graph something this complicated, but not yet. Okay, the next one, as I said, write two equations uh, for a function with amplitude of 5, a period of 6 pi, a phase shift of pi over 4, and a vertical shift up of 2. Okay, now you'll notice that it says write two equations. Um, there's actually several scenarios that are valid for this. Um, like you could think about, um, I have an amplitude of 5. I could have an amplitude of 5 and do something like this. Um, and do, this would be, here, this is 5, that's negative 5. This is just y is equal to 5 sine of x. But I also have an amplitude, um, I have another color. I also have an amplitude of 5 if I go down first and then go up. Okay, and this one would be y equals negative 5 sine of x. Okay, that still meets the same requirement of having an amplitude of 5. Or it could be cosine. And I could say cosine starts here and goes, pretend I can draw, um, goes as high as positive 5, goes as low as negative 5, um, which still meets that same requirement. Likewise, I could do the negative cosine and whatever, something like that. So point being, this one is not... Um, not the most specific of instructions, and so there's multiple correct answers. Now, you can definitely be wrong, but there's multiple correct answers. So because it says amplitude, we know that the only two parent functions that have amplitude are sine and cosine. Um, and so it has to either be sine or cosine, and I ended up doing both. I said, um, sorry, I said five, since it's the amplitude of five, I, you can either use five or negative five. I did both of those. I used one as sine, one as cosine. And then I looked at this and said, it tells me the period is 6 pi. So 6 pi needs to be equal to 2 pi over b. Therefore, b has to be 1 third. A phase shift of pi over 4 tells me um, we're moving in the positive direction, um, which means that it becomes x minus pi over 4 in both of those. And then a vertical shift up of plus 2. Um, and likewise, I said there are other situations, but those are two correct ones. Okay, the next... The last one for this video, I'm going to start the rest of it in a second, is they say write an equation for a trig function with a domain of x is not equal to 2 pi k and a range of negative infinity to 1, 5 to infinity. Okay, so the first thing that you may notice is that we have to mind the gap, um, that this is going to be either secant or cosecant because there's this big gap in the, in the graph. Um, so... There's a few ways to think through this, and, and actually, you could do it either as secant or cosecant. One of them will be easier based on the domain, um, but the other I could shift to get to that right domain. So I'm going to do the easiest one for today since we're just starting. Um, so notice this one is saying that the domain is not equal to 2 pi k. Well, let's remember our parent function for cosecant, if you remember, it goes pi and then 2 pi. Um, the parent function looks something like this. Um, and you'll notice that the asymptotes x are pi k apart. Well, the period the period for cosecant is 2 pi, but the asymptotes are halfway half of that period apart. 
noticing that. So when they say that the domain is not equal to 2 pi k, what we've done is we've stretched this out. Um, and so our new graph with just that information, here's one at 0. Here's one now at, at 2 pi. Oh, you can't see it. I'm so sorry. Um, and now here's one at 4 pi. So the, the whole period has to be all the way to 4 pi. So 4 pi would need to equal 2 pi over b. Therefore, b equals 2 pi over 4 pi, which is equal to 1 half. Okay, so we're going to need to use a 1 half, and if we keep it as uh, cosecant, then we don't need to do any sort of shifting. So we've already got that into place. So um, the period of 4 pi, therefore, that tells us the b is 1 half. Um, I had said, mind the gap, it must be secant or cosecant, and was stretched and shifted up. Oh, I forgot to talk about that. Um, notice our parent function normally starts at 1 and goes up, and goes from the bottom comes up to negative 1. Well, now this and this has a total gap of two units, okay? But in this one right here, we now have a gap of four units, which means that we've had to um, change our a value since um, in the parent function, a is equal to one, but the gap is two. So here, if we have a gap of four, the gap is four units, sorry, then that means that our a value is equal to two. Um, so, I need another piece of paper. There we go. Um, so, if we just do y equals 2 cosecant of x, I'm going to ignore the other parts for right now, then what I've got is I've got, I'm up here, I'm at positive 2 going up, I'm at negative 2 going down. But they're telling me, and that guy is a gap of 4, but now so this negative 2 needs to get shifted up so that it's, oh, where did it go? So that it's at positive 1. So negative 2, I need to add this right here. I need to add this many units. I need to add 3 units. Okay? So it was stretched by a factor of 2, um, and then it moved up 3. Now, I said or secant, which is true, but that would need... A shift left or right, depending on which one we did. So it's definitely more complicated if we try to do this as secant because secant's asymptotes wouldn't be um, secant's asymptotes would be through the middle of this one and and not where we needed them to be. But here is the best answer for that one, and I hope that was helpful.